And kicking off the session, we have Toby, who is a fellow Open Source Hardware Association board member. And um, he's going to talk about the open source hardware movement in Nigeria as we are continuing our certification across many, many continents. Everyone, don't forget Antarctica. Certify some Antarctican open source hardware and fill out the community survey. Toby, please. Hi, everyone. So I'm just about to share my screen. Um, okay. <laughs> Application, finally. Hi. So I bring greetings to you from Nigeria. People call me Internet of Toby. Uh, today is my birthday, like IOT day. Uh, I was born and raised in Nigeria. I spent most of my entire like adulthood in Nigeria. And it's been an exciting journey to kind of understand the ecosystem uh, while growing up. Um, so today I'm just gonna be sharing about some of the projects in Nigeria that people are building that they didn't realize that they're actually contributing heavily into the open source community. But how can we kind of bring them on board to kind of come to the realization that they are helping the open source hardware community in general? Uh, during the pandemic, um, one of my friends was sharing this picture with me and this guy decided to build a ventilator. And he now collaborated with like, five other people just to kind of figure out how to solve the problem of COVID-19 in Nigeria because it was very expensive to buy a ventilator back then. I think it's still very expensive. So this guy just came together and said, you know what? Why, what if we just construct it? We use all the necessary materials online. Uh, we use all the mechanical drawing and design that is available online. And they were able to come up with a fantastic ventilator that the government actually approved and say, wow, this looks like it can actually work perfectly in, in the in the uh, medical settings. So this is one of them, and, and the second one is is my friend Chile. Uh, back like few years ago, he gathered a few guys and young Nigerians together and say there is a problem of electricity. What if we take a step by solving it in a more like direct way? And they say, you know what? What if we just build a solar uh, system, like the solar panel itself? And you know, people can start beginning to think of using the solar panel to power their homes and services. And then these young kids, and you know, some of them are just uh, a carpenter, they don't have any electrical background or electronics background, and they came together to build this. And part of what they built is to put the cells together, test it. And this potentially, they don't realize that contributing to this bigger ecosystem of open source. But then they documented all the process. Documenting it meaning how did they arrive with providing the solar uh, component, the cells, can they buy it locally? What are the design and the circuit design layouts that they need to consider when building it? This one is more connected to me. Uh, back last year during the uh, you know, lockdown, I was working together with uh, two fantastic uh, people, one from Canada, uh, which is Erin, another one from Venezuela, uh, Leo. And the challenge is that how can we solve the soak time inside the ocean? I was, you know, imagine someone based in, I was in Nigeria throughout the period of this competition. And then someone in Canada, far away, if I have to travel to Canada to work with Erin, it's going to take so much of time, you know, with support of some, uh, organizations like Conservation X and all this, you know, we had to build a solution to reduce the soap fire. And I went to uh, one of the biggest uh, 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 fishermen, like it's a family of fishermen in Nigeria, and asked some questions, like basic questions about what are the challenges they face with fishing? When they put some rope inside the ocean, do they just leave it and abandon it there? And the answer was yes, they just left it there. But 
what we brought up, like the solution we worked on is how to reduce the time it spent inside the water. And it was completely open source. We put it on Hackaday, in GitHub and everything. And then sharing this with some of my friends in Nigeria, trying to teach them how to actually build it. It's amazing. They felt like, so they can contribute to some other bigger project online and then copy some people's work referencing them and then, you know, potentially build more solution through that. You know, it's, it's really amazing. Those are the kind of things that we are beginning to introduce to Nigerians' ecosystem. Talking about the open source, back in 2017, uh, I was like contributing to, uh, what's it called, PPE. Mainly, this works when uh, you are the entrance of a building or a, what's it called, a factory, and you want to be verified to enter. Although some, someone else is using the, uh, the code to build something for COVID so that before you can enter a particular location, it has to check and verify that you're putting on the fish marks, you're putting on the, all the necessary measures. But what I did was for uh, you know more industrial applications. So there's an IoT, there's so much of computer vision application, there's open source uh, Intel development uh, platform where uh, it's designed for computer vision application. And this was also open source. But the idea was for me is to bring people to the realization that you can contribute heavily, you can build solutions without focusing on making it like commercial immediately. Why not do it to solve a problem first and commercialization can come after. People can start thinking that I can take your code and you know, look for better way to you know, properly design and arrange it. During the lockdown, this is one of my most amazing projects. I felt like it's, it's so interesting to share. This is also open source project. I built this during the lockdown. This picture was the school I graduated from in Nigeria. And when I was growing up, there was this problem of electricity. I mean, till today, there's still issue of electricity. But then I realized that while I was studying in school, I lost my phone at some point. Uh, someone just, you know, pick up the phone. Uh, I couldn't find the phone because I went out to charge the phone. And during the lockdown, I felt like, what, what else can I do to contribute to the ecosystem in my school so that students can gather together and potentially work collaboratively and, uh, you know, build solutions, you know, solve problems of the society. And then I felt like, okay, what if I build a solar workstation at the center of the school? You can see the sun is coming from the left-hand side. This picture is the most amazing one. And then I collaborated with some local developers. When I say local developers, they don't have a laptop. You know, these are people that, uh, you know, just have their mini factory somewhere and they build based on what you tell them. And I told the person, you know what I want? I want people that can sit, like four or five people gather together in a circular form to power the solar. He doesn't really have a clue about the solar power. And he came up with a very tiny little drawing and said, you know what, let's make it bigger. Put it in, in a more well-documented uh, 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 you know, design. Let's share with some students that have interest to contribute and support and build this together. You know, to, to my own surprise, they gather around and say, you, we can help you build it, we can support you, we can do all this and such a thing. And eventually, this looks more fantastic than what I expected. If I was thinking on my own and say, okay, I want to build a system where students can come together, I wouldn't go this far. It, it, it now makes it more amazing when we created a space where the less privileged can access this workstation. If you look at the picture very well, there's two sides. You can drive in your uh, wheelchair from this other side. Another person can drive in wheelchair. You just light it inside the workstation. Why is it Internet of Things enabled? Which is very funny. So this school, they have over 20,000 population. This workstation cannot serve this 20,000. It can only serve like eight people at a time. So we develop like um, an online platform where you can book the workstation ahead of time. And it, it's really amazing. When you book the workstation, it, it allocates a particular time for you. At this time slot, the school can continuously monitor it and say, uh, so, so, so students went to this workstation at a particular time. This was built based on the mindset of collaboration. And it was launched. I mean, students are using it right now. Uh, the IoT part is the you booking the workstation ahead of time. When you book the workstation, 
it only give you a time uh, frame. Like you can only use the work session for like, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, five minutes or two minutes or one hour, you know, depending on uh, specification you booked uh, of, on the school website. And it's, it's also amazing that uh, I grew up in Ibadan, which is one of the biggest city in, in Nigeria. The government is also looking into how can they teach the citizen to build this and they can build it in their community. And that, that, that blew my mind the way I say, this was just done based on finding problem in Nigeria to solve and solving it in a more collaborative way. But these ideas also come with challenges in Nigeria. And these challenges are, has always been what people talk about. I identify these three parts, and it's been really funny that it could be, it could overlap with some challenges people have in some other countries. And the first one is industrial adaptation. I was working for startup for over like five years, and most of the project what we built was more, you know, centered on never share it. Even when you're talking to someone or maybe potential uh, collaborator, do not say everything, which I understand. But at some point, when working on the project, there's need to talk to someone to share idea in more technical formats, not just, uh, yes, I'm gonna build this. But Nigeria is not creating that system yet. And startup organizations that are coming into Nigeria, like VCs and all this, uh, organization, they didn't realize that open source can actually drive innovation. And how can we tell them that we, when we are building 100% original, they still need to collaborate at some points that we, you know, increase the level of, um, you know, what's it called, innovation around the project. And that's exactly one of the challenges we are facing in Nigeria. And how can we tell them it's open source hardware meaning code that you worked on can be, be used and, you know, be modify and make better, you know. So those are the kind of things that, challenges that we have in Nigeria. There's inexperience uh, in the hardware open source community in Nigeria. So, and this is you building solution, how can you see and see the need that this is actually a market fit? The technical part can have so, some sort of business background. A lot of hardware, I mean, hardware developer in Nigeria just feel like, I want to build this. They build it, they just dump it. Some, it happened to me over time. It was when I realized that there's so much of bills that you need to pay. If you contribute in a, in, a, in a more open source way, people would even find you where you are in Nigeria because you make it open source. It makes your solution more available to people in the US, in Canada, all over Africa, or you know, in, in Asia. And that's exactly what I've realized with this open source mind. Back in 2015, I was contributing heavily in the Hyperloop projects. You know, that was even one of the things that made me famous in Nigeria. And I was contributing voluntarily without being paid for. And eventually, you know, we got the opportunity. The project was selected for the Hyperloop competition. Elon Musk was involved, took some pictures, you know, it was open source. All the codes that we used to build that Hyperloop till today, is still online. The designs, you know, supports from different hardware community. And that's exactly what I've been telling people and telling developers in Nigeria as well. And the last one, which is working in silos, it's always the problem of some of us in hardware, uh, whereby we feel like we know everything. And then we feel like we're building the most and the best innovative project in the world. What we are building, someone else has thought of that idea before. But because there was no one he or she can collaborate with directly, makes it difficult for him to see. And in my own, uh, uh, you know, my language, we have these settings whereby if you've not been to someone else's farm before, you would think that it is your father's farmland that is the biggest. Again, if you've not been to someone else's farmland before, your thoughts will be like, your own farmland was the biggest. Why not go to someone else's farmland and you see that, oh man, that was even bigger than my father's family. And that's exactly what we are trying to build in the open source community in Nigeria. How can you collaborate with someone, make it open source, help someone else somewhere, and then all of you get credit for what you are building. But then with these challenges, there's a group in Nigeria, we call it Adwin Nigeria Community. And this is just, uh, you know, we started from WhatsApp group, we went to, you know, going online, I mean, like a website where 
hardware Nigerians and community can start putting their projects okay. in place. This you is know? awesome. Maybe you can, uh, I'm going to give you like 30 more seconds because we got to try to ah. get on step schedule. Um, maybe you can drop yeah. a link to the Harbor Nigeria community in the chat. I mean, that's, yeah, that's even the last one. That's, that's the last slide. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you, right. Toby. Um,